How you feeling, Robbie? What's that? History is being made. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, it was already made. It was just we're fulfilling it. How's that? No, no accidents. No mistakes. Happy accidents. How's that? How many people do we have here from outside the United States? Clap. Clap your hands so I can hear you. I can't see you. Okay. How many came from uh, the West Coast? Make some noise for yourselves. How you doing, brother? Josie. Good to see you, brother. It's awesome, man. You made it. Did you fly in? Are your arms sore? <laughs> Here they come. I get to use all the papa jokes. They weren't all bad. They were just predictable. All right. Is everybody in? 30 seconds. And then we're going. We got people on uh, online going, what are they doing? If you were here, you'd know. <laughs> I'm just looking around, looking at people from what I can see. But man, just, it's surreal. It's very surreal. Patricia Steers down here. It really is. It's a joy. It's a joy. I just, I don't know. It's so weird. Surreal. That's the best word I can use. Surreal. Nathan Thompson's here too. What's up, Nate dog? I love you, man. I'll bring that up, by the way. Yeah. I kind of wanted to let the, I wanted to play the video though, because some people may not have seen it, but I don't think they can get it queued up in time. I'll have to do it tomorrow. So I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. But yes, thank you for reminding me because it is important because most everybody that's seen it goes like, whoa. Should have been there. Should have been there. All right. Everybody in? Coming down in 10, 9, 8. Count with me. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And there's no liftoff. Because we're not going to waste your money. I'm still waiting for PETA to go after NASA for polluting the ocean. And it's not with astronaut debris. It's not with astronaut debris. All right. I think we're ready. Give me the cue, guys. I'm just waiting on you. Good to go. All right. All right. So without further ado, as we continue on with this conference, FEIC 17, I still can't believe we're here. I really can't. It's so cool. And I will tell you this. I'm exhausted. I have not done this type of running around and staying awake. And it's not. And, and it wasn't like somebody was like putting a gun to my head saying, you must stay awake. No, it was like I could not go to sleep last night. I don't know about, you, about any of you, but I was like, there was a rush. And probably sugar rush because I had a lot of cookies and pop yesterday. <laughs> I would not go to sleep last night. I couldn't. I think I was the last man. I think I even beat Robbie Davidson last night. I was the last man standing. Huh? Half hour? You are the man. No wonder you're so skinny, dude. Burning everything off. It's like Robbie doesn't burn the candle at both ends. He cuts it in half and you have four flames going when he lights it. Like, how's that? Take that. All right. This next guy that's coming up, I've had the pleasure, just especially in the last month and a half. Woo, that was not good. The last month, sorry, not about Jared, but that just blew my ear off. Uh, the last month and a half, we've been uh, really getting together a lot more, uh, a group of folks. Um, and I will say this, this, this surprise tomorrow when you hear about this, and some of you may know already, and that's cool. It's not like you're under a contract. You have to keep it. You can tell people if you know about it. 
but it's an exciting opportunity for not just us, but for all of you and all of us and people that don't even know about it yet. It's groundwork that's being done. And when I started looking at all this stuff, thanks to Skiba and thanks to Sergeant, Jaron came into the picture, Jaronism. And I liked his, I liked the way that he was analytical. And Jaron, Jaron and I, we're friends. We're going to be working together on some things. And we don't agree on everything. Yet. But it is a privilege and an honor to, to be amongst all these folks. But it's even cooler to bring out Jaron Campanella of Jaronism. What you're seeing here is a barrage, barrage, barrage. Houston, we have a problem. What you're seeing here is a barrage. barrage. All right, now we can go. So uh, it's an honor, guys. It really is to be here. Uh, to see this is like a, it's like a dream. It really is because when this all started, I was looking for the truth. You guys know that, and I didn't know where it was going to lead. And I certainly never thought this was where it was going. Uh, but what I found out is that there's more people like me. There's more people that have questioned everything that they've ever been shown and that they realize it's okay to question. So I wanted to um, thank you all for you know bearing with me through my videos, through my crappy live feeds that I can never figure out the audio to and <laughs> for listening to Monday Night Raw. Um, you know, Miss is not here to join me. Uh, we have a new puppy. His name is Mr. Puppy, to be. Um, but he has a little bit more of a separation anxiety than I do. So... Um, she, he ended up staying home with her, but she wanted to say thank you and that she appreciates everybody so much. It's, it's sometimes is hard to even, um, get in words how much everybody means. So I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you to you guys, because without you, none of this would be here. I know Robbie said the same thing. Um, but I really do want to say it. I couldn't say it strong enough that, uh, the things that we're doing, and I know I've, I've met a lot of you in the hallways and, and, and you guys all are saying the same things that I don't know how you do it. I know you guys get put down a lot. And the reason we do it is because of you guys. I mean, if, if it was just me um, saying it and I was told, you know, oh, you're crazy. Well, we would have went away. I would have blamed Mark Sargent and said it was his fault and, <laughs> and just moved on. But because there was uh, more people out there who kept emailing me and saying, you know, keep speaking out. You're saying things we can't say. And because I was in a position uh, working from home, that it was something I could do and wanted to do, that um, I'm doing it for all you as well as, as myself. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you guys. And thank you guys for watching Globusters. I know tomorrow we'll talk a little bit more. It was awesome meeting Bob and how awesome him and Cammy are. And they become like best friends. So it's really been awesome to meet um, all of you. And the point of my talk was going to be with videos and with a PowerPoint and I had it done and I, I thought about it and I said, you know what, that seems too much like one of my videos. It seemed almost identical to what I normally do. And I wanted to do something different because anybody can watch my videos. And this, this talk is supposed to be about NASA and the space lies and SpaceX and ESA and you name it. And I do think they're all a massive deception. But I think it's important that everybody does their own research. And I try to point that out as often as possible. And I try to say it as often as I can, because if you ever are listening to what someone's telling you, or you're watching me point out space fakery or what I think is a hoax, I'm doing that to kind of get you on your, on your way. But all of space travel, in my opinion, is fake. And all of outer space and the way that we've been taught it on planets and nebulas 
is completely different than we've been taught. And that realization ultimately comes with looking into this stuff yourself. And if anybody ever says, well, I think space is fake because Jaron says, or I think space is fake because Jaron showed it in a video, I, I think there's a big problem there because it's exactly why we're in this predicament, that people think space is what they've been told because they've been told. And so this talk is going to be a little bit more about the importance of everyone. And that goes for scientists, that goes for professors, um, to look into the things that they're teaching. Because I know teachers, and I know that the last thing they want to do is teach lies. Teachers want to educate. They want to excite. They want to enthrall. And even though the ideas of space that we've been taught might do that, if they found out that what they're teaching is a lie, they would all stop tomorrow. And so I think that the, the, you know, the main point of what I'm trying to say is going to be the importance behind actually doing your own research and you know, showing NASA to be the fraud that they are. Um, I also wanted to say that I know that Robbie said we don't know 100%, and I would agree with that on one end, but I also know 100% one thing, and that's that they're hiding God. Without a doubt, in my mind, um, that is the reason for this all. And like you said, people are getting paid to do it. Um, you know, Carl Sagan said extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And I think to tell children that they're spinning on a ball is an extraordinary claim. And to say that we're flying through space and that the atmosphere sticks with Earth sounds like extraordinary claims. Sounds like it's just ad hoc ex explanations for things that we would see on a spinning ball that we don't see because it's not spinning and it's not a ball. So it, it comes down to why are they hiding God and how can we change that, you know? And to me, um, it comes down to really, that's why I do what I do is for everybody, but it's because ultimately, if you just use your, your brain and you drop everything that you've ever been told you are a created individual. This is a created place. This is a mind far greater than, you know, every single human being ever born had to be responsible for this. It's not an accident. It's not a um, explosion in space. It's not uh, random molecules joining together, the laws of physics, um, you name it, all of it was put together and it's obvious. And I think that that's what they've stolen from us is that obvious nature. You know, lately I've been saying, and I don't know, whether or not people agree with me, it's just something I've seen. I think deep down inside, I think everybody knows that it's flat. I think you were born with that way. I think everybody saw it growing up. And I think that because of the education that we were given and because of the indoctrination and because of every TV show and video and commercial and logo, they were able to change that feeling. But I think the ones that really hate us or the ones that uh, come down the hardest it's because deep down inside of them, they know. And as hard as that may be for some of us to admit, um, if you're about the truth, if you care about actually talking about what things are true and you actually respect people who, who are willing to speak out about that, then you will you know, come to the realization eventually um, that we've been lied to you know, on the largest, largest possible scale. Um, so I just want people to look into what what it is that you do believe, you know, and I mean everything that's from religion to science to where you live to uh, every single thing deserves your thought process. And I feel like so many people in today's world simply accept what they're told, whether it's about their beliefs, whether it's about um, their science, whether it's about where you live. And if you're going to accept what you're told, then you need to be open to the fact that people will always lie to you. You know, people will always try and get one over on you whenever possible. I've often said that there's nobody in my life that has ever not lied to me. And that's across the board. And so if your own family, whether it's for your own good, whether it's for um, some particular reason, whatever it is, people will lie to you. And if they can get one over on you, if they can do something that makes you less knowledgeable that makes them make more money than you make, that makes you um, into a, a slave, then they'll do it. 
And I think that every bit of evidence that you can look at in your life should tell you that. And so I just want people to really look into what they believe, because if you're real, and I think so far, as far as I can tell everybody out there is real, um, no CGI here, but you know, I'm real. That's all I can say is that uh, you may love me, you may hate me, and I, you know, I prefer that you love me, but if you hate me, um, it's okay. I would just hope that you listen to the things I say, take them in, and if you don't like it, then you um, can listen to somebody else that maybe hits more home with you. But I think that we need to listen to the words that people are saying and actually learn to take what they're saying and then process it ourselves through our own um, realization of reality. You know, experience is life. And you're all here to experience the conference. And when you wake up every day, you're experiencing the day. And everything that we do is for the experience of it. And yet NASA does what they can to teach you about something you'll never experience. And they force it down your throat as if it is part of your experience. And people have adopted it as if space travel is part of their experience, as if orbits are part of your experience, as if satellites are part of your experience. And they simply aren't. And again, that's my opinion. And I think that I can speak um, proudly about it, or I can ex at least speak with my honest opinion because of the research I've done that clearly shows me that these things are not legit. And I think people need to really take the time to look into satellites, for instance, just as an example, that yeah, we're told satellites exist. We're told what they do. And if I say they don't exist and somebody makes a video and says, well, right here, you can go to this website and it says right here, the satellites exist and what they do, that those, those people are not realizing what I'm saying. And I, I thank you guys for being the ones that do understand what I'm saying, that if it's a deception, well then, you know, no shit, Sherlock, if you go check out a web page that's about satellites, then you're not going to find the deception there. It needs to be <laughs> a more, a more robust research experience to where, <laughs> and it's, it's something that people just don't do. They don't demand proof of things that we're told. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, Bill Nye, who tells us, you know, why don't tell flat earthers to go take a picture of the edge? And I tell Bill Nye, uh, why are you teaching something for 100 years that you don't have a picture of the earth? You know, that's the problem, is that we shouldn't be asked to find a picture of the edge when we're not saying we know there's an edge. We're not saying we know where that edge is. But you're telling us that you know exactly down to the millimeter where every piece of land is, how the earth operates, how it spins, how it orbits, how big the sun is. And yet we don't have a picture of the earth. And for NASA to be where they are, and you know, I don't know how many people are here, but I'm guessing, let's say there's 400. Imagine that we gave each person here $52 million a day. Imagine that. <laughs> And imagine after one, you know, <laughs> after one day, I'm sorry, you know, if we gave each person $52 million for the year, is what I meant to say, because they get $52 million a day. And when you think about the 365 days in a year, and then you look at what NASA accomplishes at the end of one year, it's a joke. It is absolutely a joke to be shown CGI images, to be shown black and white images of Saturn's rings. It's a joke. It is absolutely the worst thing I've ever seen because of what it does to the minds of people that, and I know I'm one of them, you know, I've admitted before that when I came out of religion and saw that as a deception, I went to science because there they are with open arms saying, we, we're about truth, we're about evidence, we're about um, everything that you're looking for. And so I felt like I found home. So I recognize what a lot of these people that believe in science, I recognize what they're feeling and why they're there. And when you go there and you look for the evidence, you can be like me and actually dig deep into it, or you can simply accept everything that they tell you. And I, I feel like I've said it before, that science is really an excuse for people to be stupid. Because it's true, if you've ever seen these guys in forums or in comment sections, 
Um, they just tell you, read a physics book, dude. You know, science, you don't know about gravity. And it's just an excuse to give up that search in life, that, that the point of education should be to always be moving towards the truth, right? And science should always be about moving towards the truth. And science should never be settled. It should never be settled science. And it should always be open for question. It should always be open for um, new evidence to come along. And that's not the science we're given today. We get uh, Neil deGrasse and Bill Nye and these guys and Lawrence Krauss to go around and tell us that evolution is a fact, that there is no if, ands, or buts about it. And when you look into it, there's nothing but if, ands, and buts. It is the worst theory that there ever has been that has been forced upon every child in this country. And, you know, I can't speak on behalf of other countries, but I'm sure it's as prevalent there. And so getting back to what I was saying about the point of my talk is going to be about looking into your own or doing your own investigation into everything. Because if you believe in evolution or you don't, I hope it's because you've looked into it. Because so many times in my life, I've had a belief, and if it's challenged, I back away because it's not my real belief. And the kind of the highlight of my, my life, I guess I'd say at this point, has been when I said, you know what, I'm not going to believe things until I can prove it myself. I'm not going to adopt something as my belief until I've done the research behind it. And I still, every day, find myself uh, saying something or Missa will mention something and I'll answer it. And, you know, why, do, why are humans different than this animal? So because of chromosomes. And then I'll have to take that step back and say, okay, what do I really know about chromosomes? And then I have to go and research that and look into it and come to my own conclusion. But when you do that, and I, I challenge everyone to do that, you will feel so much better about everything that you believe in. And it's such a, an empowering feeling to truly believe what you believe because you believe it. And it's, it sounds funny, but on the other hand, so many people believe things that they've never done research on because it seems to be matter of fact. And I know I'm preaching to the choir because if you are at this conference, it's because you are open to those things and you understand that and you, you've you recognized the power behind um, research and investigation. And, you know, I was just talking to Wide Awake. I don't know where he is, I see him out here somewhere. Just talking to him out in the hallway. Um, he has such an awesome channel because it's about observations. And uh, when you've learned to trust somebody like that, I can go to his channel and I can look at things that he's done because I'm certainly not saying that I think we all need to just depend on ourselves that you can grow knowledge even faster when you adopt certain people as trustworthy. And I think the people that we've adopted as trustworthy, NASA, um, different scientific uh, entities, they're not trustworthy. And when you realize that, why, why do we continue to let them do what we do? Or why do we continue to let them do what they do? To me, that's my goal for uh, definitely 2018, it's been my goal for, you know, since I started this, but my goal is really going to be to put NASA to the fire and really force them to prove what they're saying is true, knowing that they cannot. <laughs> I know that um, I've seen too many evidence, too much evidence of fakery. And I just ask people, rather than show you on the, on the board here, hey, look at this, doesn't this look fake? Hey, look at this, this is clearly a scuba diver in space, whatever it might be, I, I beg you to do the research that I've done, which is just simply go and look at this stuff. Bring it up. It's, it's actually funny, to be honest. I mean, you can actually have a little laugh at it. But really, you need to prove it to yourself and then start showing people. I've got friends who have now come over to the fact they're not quite flat earthers, but they definitely will say, oh, yeah, you're right, NASA's fake. Um, Put it to people, make them say, make them state that they believe that's real. You know, the other day I did a video um, talking to a guy, uh, Sly Sparkane, and one of the things I asked him in his comment section, um, because he said, oh, you lied. You said that I believe in this thing if it's true. Well, I never said that. I said, you don't need to state that. I said, what are you saying, that this it isn't true or it is? He said, well, I don't know why I have to state one way or the other, but I put him in that corner 
to where he had a choice to make. Either he's going to say that it's real, in which case uh, I think it's laughable. When you look at some of this old 50s and 60s footage, it's clearly done in a studio. It's clearly done with wires or models. And I don't know how it's done. I don't know whether it's, but we know what's real. And so when you put it on somebody to force them to state whether or not they believe that space travel has ever been faked, has it ever been fraud, you know, fraudulent? And I think that that's a new method that I want to get people to really question uh, everything. Because if they faked it once, what's to stop them from faking it twice? And what's to stop them from faking it all? You know, and to me, I don't see anything that tells me that we've been outside of low Earth orbit. And I don't even see anything that says that orbits are real. So if that's the case, then that means that they can only get so high and they might be able to fly around at that height. But after that, everything from that point, and if you want to know that point, watch any space launch video. It's the point where the camera switches. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> it's, not, it's not difficult. Um, you've got people like Red's Rhetoric and those guys that watch space launches or rocket launches. And I understand why they believe the launch, and I understand why they believe the thing heading away from them, but then the camera switches. And then you get that awkward, weird look from behind the, the rocket and the thing is glowing red as if metal glows red like that and stays together. But if that camera change is where you need to call people to, to pay attention and say, could this not be faked? How do we have any evidence that this is real? Where is there tangible proof? And when I say evidence, I mean not because the math works. You know, you can make math say anything you want. But I'm talking about evidence as in tangible proof and observable evidence. We live in the world. We see with our eyes every day. You can recognize what's real and what's not. And I feel like there's something inside of us maybe, because it was inside me too, that fights against calling a, a fake a fake. You, you almost want to uh, reserve judgment or to hold back in case you're wrong. Well, force them, the ones teaching you what is true, to prove it as true. It's not our job to prove to ourselves that what they're saying is true. Force them to prove it. If you're going to teach children at an age of first grade, you know, an age of six or seven, if you're going to teach something is a fact, then you better have every bit of evidence to prove that that is the case. And if you don't have that evidence, well, then I imagine you'd probably have to make sure you teach children when they're young. You'd have to make sure you put it in every school book. You'd have to make sure you put it in every commercial and every video and every movie. You'd have to make sure that before you say something about the ball earth that you started with, of course, we've always known that the earth's a ball. Of course, we've known for thousands of years that the earth is round because you'd have to constantly poke that into people's brains over and over again because of the fear that one day somebody would speak out. And you got to make sure that that doesn't happen. And what happened, and this is a result of it, this, this group of people and the people making videos on YouTube and the people speaking out have all realized that it's not true. And we've spoiled their plans by being that one person speaking truth. Because what happens when one person speaks truth? Another one hears it. And then two are speaking. And then four are speaking. And then eight are speaking. And if you guys are, are like me, then you've realized that there, there is no going back. That that's how fake what they're showing us is. That it's not a matter of, oh, well, NASA proved it by sh you know, showing me this video. There is no going back. That it is fake because it's fake, and they're going to continue to fake it uh, until they're gone. They have no. There's no option. There is no coming back from NASA once it's been outed as a fraud. They must only exist to perpetrate the fraud. That's that's their entire goal. So I think that this talk I wanted to really center on recognizing that, and this it really goes to like teachers. Again, like I know that I've known so many teachers that were great people in my life. And in fact, my mom used to teach music, but she was a teacher and, a, and she did it for the children. And nobody wants to wreck 
the lives of children with lies. Um, and when I say no one, obviously that isn't true. There is some people out there that do. And it's for their own gain. And it's for their own prosperity. It's for their own power. And it's despicable. It's bottom of the barrel garbage. I mean, those are the people that um, you know, I would love to say that I, I love everyone. I love everyone as a brother. But anybody who wishes me harm like that so much that they're going to um, indoctrinate my mind with, with false ideas and my children's mind and my grandchildren's mind without a care um, in the world. Those people I don't think of as brothers. You know, I really don't. Those people have something deeply wrong inside them. And we have the numbers, which is the, the most shocking thing that I think people forget is that they're outnumbered you know, 98% to 2%. The people in this world that want nothing more than peace and want happiness for them, their brothers, their neighbors, their family, is a majority of people. But there is that other percentage of people that is tough to beat because they go to places we would never go. You know what? We would never indoctrinate children to push flat earth. We would never indoctrinate children to make them believe what we believe. And that's why I over and over again will say it until the end of time that, you know, um, do your own research, you know, come to your own conclusions. And that's how you get people to recognize the truth. But you never see Neil deGrasse or these guys say, do your own research, look into it yourself. They say that it's been settled. Read this book that, you know, was published um, by Rand McNally and these other groups that are part of these elite groups that don't care about you and they don't care about me. And so how do we go about doing that? How do we go about stopping NASA? How do we go about, uh, and I think it all comes with information, with informing the public the best that we can. That's what my videos, the point of them is. The point of my videos is to try and get out the information to people that have never heard it before. Because if, you've, if you hear a video where I say that space is fake and you should look into it, rocket launches are fake and the shuttle was just a big airplane with a helium balloon attached to it. If, if you hear me say those things and you choose to not look into it, then that's, that's your business. That's okay by me. But I think that for myself, I never had the ability to question. You know, I was never given that right because it was taught to me as a fact and so who wants to question facts? Who wants to dig into facts? It doesn't make a lot of sense. If something's a fact, well, then it's, it's a fact. Why would I need to really research it much? But when you come to these realizations and you see that facts are not, are not true just because they're facts, if that makes any sense. Facts are not true because someone says so or because someone has dictated to you that they are facts. A fact is something that can be tested over and over again. They can go back to um, observationally every time. And it always is true. And what they're showing us is simply not a fact. It's simply CGI footage. It's propaganda. And how high this goes, who, who at the ultimate top knows that it's the case? I don't know that. But I know that getting it into those ears is how I'll find out, you know? Um, I did like an open letter to Trump as one of my videos because people will say, well, do you think Trump knows? Do you think he knows that space is fake? And I would love to hear him say that he thinks everything in space travel is real because if you observe it and you look into it and you come to that conclusion, um, I have a hard time believing anything else you say. I have a hard time adopting any of your ideas because clearly you're not analytical enough to observe something in, and I'm not talking about one video, you know, that's not how you analytically look at something and come to a conclusion. You have to take all of it. And that's why I say, I'm not a flat earther because of, you know, Mark Sargent's videos. I'm not a, a flat earther because of uh, Dee Marble's videos. I'm not a flat earther because of somebody else's videos. I'm a flat earther because every single piece of research I've done is leading me to that conclusion. It's not because of one thing. It's not because I, I feel it's flat for this reason or that. It's because of everything. 
And when you've looked into every bit of your existence and over and over again, things keep pointing a certain direction, well, then I think you're a fool to ignore it. And when you really look at everything, I would love to talk to anyone who says that they believe that the earth is a ball and they've looked into it all. And those are the people, you know, I think Robbie said it best when he said, I'm willing to have a debate with, with any of those people. You know, I ask them to simply do what I do, which is stand in front of people with your face and with your name and be willing to stand behind the words that you're saying. And I'll debate anybody on those facts because it simply comes down to, have you been there? You know, have you been to Saturn? Have you been to Jupiter? Well, the answer for every one of them is going to be no. And then it comes down to people arguing words that they've heard from someone else. And I think that alone will defeat any of them in a debate from Neil deGrasse to any, you know, you've read a book, Neil, you've, you're much better at uh, memorization of astrophysics than I am. Have you been there? Have you been to space? Have you touched it? Uh, do you know that it exists for what reason besides someone told you? And I think the more we go after people with that kind of mentality, um, and I wouldn't even argue that I wouldn't debate from a position of, I know the earth is flat and it's shaped like this because I don't know. But I think that my evidence of observation, my evidence of experience is far more prevalent, is far more important than someone read it in a book. And that's really what space comes down to, to me is if we only get, the camera changes after the rocket launches and everything else is the words of a book then it should be easy for people to see what could be going on here and we owe it to ourselves and we owe it to our children and our family and our fellow human beings and our grandchildren we owe it to each other to look into this with the fine tooth comb to dig into this with every bit of insight and every bit of evidence that we can because of the implications if what we're saying is true. And that's something that the human race needs to do simply because of what happens if it is a lie. And what happens is the world ends up like, well, like it is. Go outside and take a look at what's going on with people and the hatred and the um, disgust and the they filth up the earth and they, they don't kick, take care of each other. You know, one time my mom, I think, told me a long, long ago that uh, how easy life would be if we all took care of the person to our right. And it's, what a simple statement and something that's so simple when you think of taking care of one person and making sure that they have everything they need and the food that they need. So simple. And how easy the world would be fixed if we took that line of thinking. But instead, we have a different idea where some people are more important than others. Some people's rights are more important than others. Some people's riches are more important than others. And when you really break it down, I mean, when you look at it with the, with the kind of um, investigation that it deserves, you realize that a lot of this stems from an atheistic point of view, the atheistic idea that we are um, all from stardust, that when we die, we wither away and, and it matters not what you do on this earth. And that to me is a huge problem that such a problem that it deserves that we dig into this with every ounce of our being to prove one way or the other, either let's put it this way, that if you are a flat earther, if you have looked into this at all and you've uh, opened your mind to the possibility then I think you can say one thing for sure, and it's because you don't believe NASA. So there's one thing that's different between people who believe in the globe and people who believe in a flat plane, and that difference is your trust of NASA. And so I think that needs to be exploited to the point where we all kind of see now that there, there is a divide. There is a, a clear line in the sand, if you will, between people who uh, think we're crazy and people who uh, understand why they think we're crazy. And, and that should be, 
And I did want to mention that I, I'm glad I left my tinfoil hat in the room or else Daryl's joke wouldn't have uh, made any sense at the beginning. But it, you can say whatever you want. You, can, you know, They can make fun of it. They can um, make jokes about it. But when you are in this room, I know all of you have heard it all before. You know, It's not something that bothers you anymore because we were all on the other side. You know, my wife told me, you know, do you think the earth can be flat? And I told her, you know, shut up. That's crazy. What are you talking about? How do planes go around it? Don't be silly. And so I know we've all had that, that position to where we think it's ridiculous. And we know why it's ridiculous. It's because we were taught that it is ridiculous. You know, we were taught that only desert wandering, you know, uh, nomads ever thought that the earth was flat, that it's the most ridiculous thought or idea that there ever was. And the problem for me is, if that's the case, then why is it when I tell somebody to look into this, do they come back and say, oh, that's interesting, you know, it has some, uh, has some important points, it has some interesting things. And I'll always come back to them and say, that right there should be the biggest slap in the face you've ever had. That if something is going to be the dumbest thing that there is, if something is going to be the dumbest thing that you can, or the worst insult you can throw at somebody, you're a flat earther, then when you go looking at it, it should be the dumbest thing something somebody can believe. It should be without evidence. It should be without any merit at all. And when you find that there is merit, then you need to ask yourself, well, wait a second, why would this be considered dumb? Why would this be considered the worst insult you can call somebody on Capitol Hill. If somebody says, well, this, this guy believes it's like a flat earth belief and everybody laughs and chuckles. Well, if you were going to teach a lie as the truth and you were going to hide the truth, well, then you would need to make sure that people thought that that truth was the dumbest thing that there was. That somebody who believed in the truth is the biggest idiot that there is. And that's the only way that you could perpetrate a hoax like this is if you changed it around on people where you teach people the truth is an idiotic belief and you teach people that the idiotic belief the spinning ball flying through space that uh, never loses its atmosphere that never you know varies in its path if you, to teach that as the truth is a mockery to me and it wasn't ever you know i used to believe it just like you know 95 percent or 98 percent of people do i used to believe it too but I, you know, I challenge people to ask their friends, their family, next time they watch a sunset, there's nobody, nobody on earth that watches a sunset and says, oh, this is fun. I'm falling backwards with my head and the sun's stationary and here I go falling backwards, which is what they believe. That is what the sunset is. If you believe in the ball, that you are spinning away from the sun, which is stationary. Nobody believes that, yet they believe in space and the ball theory and the NASA um, excuse for the earth. But there's so many things like that. There's nobody who watches the sun go across the sky and doesn't realize that the sun is moving across the sky. It's, that's what it's doing. And if you can't experience something, then to call it true is a huge step, right? If you don't experience spinning, Imagine the amount of evidence, going back to what Carl Sagan said, and he was talking about religion, of course, not science, and didn't realize that he was teaching a religion himself. But if you are willing to say that you're spinning on the earth, and you're willing to say that you're flying through space, and you're willing to say that the sun is a million times bigger than the earth, I mean, has anybody ever traveled <laughs> around the earth? Have you traveled across the earth and you traveled to get here? Uh, it took me five hours on a plane to get here, and that was an awful big distance to think that the sun is a million times the size of the earth. That's such a statement that requires extraordinary evidence. And because your mathematic figures work out is not extraordinary evidence because it's angular distance. It's the same thing if you reduced it mathematically, you could make it a different distance. And you could make, you'd have to adjust everything. You'd have to adjust Saturn, you'd have to adjust Jupiter. But none of us experience the planets. We don't experience that. What does anybody care about a gas planet anyway? I don't understand the uh, fixation with a ball of gas and uh, we have to send these craft there, it's, it's crazy. 
But I think that um, we need to recognize a fraud when we see it. And we need to uh, stop believing in the people who are perpetrating these frauds. And I know that it's not going to happen in 10 days. I know it's not going to happen in 10 months. And it might not even happen in 10 years. But the truth is the truth. And as long as there's people speaking it, it doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be Mark. It doesn't have to be anybody. As long as someone's speaking it, it's going to grow. And so I think when this first started, I kind of felt like, I was important. I thought I felt like I need to get this information out because if I don't, then what's going to happen? And now I no longer feel that way. And I thank all you for that because now I know I could go away. Mark could go away. Patricia can go away. Any of us can go away and the truth will continue on. And I think NASA and the world that is perpetrating this hoax might realize that, that they were able to sweep it under the rug for as long as they have, and they were able to keep it out of people's minds. But the internet has been big. YouTube has been big. As much as they may try and squash it now, it's kind of too late. There's so many people who are starting new websites or starting new video downloading services or uploading services that the truth is going to continue on. And so we have to thank all of you for, for that because some of us have radio stations now or radio shows or some of us have uh, other opportunities and it's because of you guys and I don't think that there's any stopping it anymore and I don't think I felt that way from from the beginning I thought I was afraid it could be stopped and I don't think that's the case anymore there's too many people who have realized that this deception is much more than we ever thought I think for you guys I know I'm the same that when we heard about 9-11 or we uh, heard about Sandy Hook our first reaction was no that's crazy no, that's not true. That's not possible. What do you mean the government's involved? What do you mean that that wasn't a real event? But by doing the research is the only way that you realized that those things were not as we were told by your mainstream media. And then you did research on another thing and you did something else. And then you realize that there's one group out there that's not doing any research. And that's the mainstream media. They absolutely... Yeah. So the one, the one group that is supposed to be doing research, the one group that is supposed to protect us from corrupt politicians, from fake science, from fake rocket launches, from fake rocket landings, that one group is not doing their job. And so it's going to take us to do it. And I think we've already started that. And you know, like I, I can't say it enough, I appreciate everyone for just watching because we can't start a news network. That's not the place in the world that we are. Uh, these news agencies are all owned by the very people I spoke about earlier that are willing to lie to your face, that are willing to pretend, that are willing to hoax, that are willing to CGI places and tell you that they're real. And when you look at NASA and you follow their, or you know where they came from, their origination, and you watch the progression of what they've done it becomes blatantly obvious of what they're doing. You don't go to the moon in 1969 and not leave Earth orbit since. You just don't. You don't, you don't celebrate Elon Musk's rocket landing when we did it on the moon 50 years ago <laughs> with people inside of it and then took off of it. We don't do that, you know? It, It, it bothers me that it shouldn't be impressive the things that they tell us are impressive when these things happened before. When these guys are in Earth orbit for 17 years, supposedly, and we pay $87 million each time one of them flies to the ISS, what have they possibly done to earn $87 million one time? Once. Nothing. They've done absolutely nothing. And... Grill them on it. Ask them. The biggest thing for me, and I've said this time and time again, but it's a fact and the world needs to know it and they need to recognize what's going on. We as citizens of this country pay taxes 
which are required. If NASA was a volunteer organization, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't care. If people who wanted to donate to NASA donated to NASA to be shown CGI pictures and told that it's real, it's on them. I don't care. It's not a volunteer organization. You are required to have your money go to NASA, and I'll be damned if I'm going to let them take my money to tell me lies. You know? And not just me, but my, my children, you know, and my children's children. I'm not going to let somebody take my money and use it to inflict punishment mentally on people that I love. And that's everybody. You know, that's we're all a creator's uh, creation, right? We're all a gift. We should be uh, recognize that. We should treat each other as such. We all have unique abilities. Um, we all have our own special talents and I feel like those things are being taken by groups like NASA but you don't do the things that they're doing unless there's something sinister behind it you don't go to the moon and tell us that you went to the moon and at such a young age and I think this is another thing that people have a hard time grasping but by by saying that we went to the moon as a child, you grow up and you think it's possible to go to that ball in the sky. You think it's possible to stand on it. And de facto, then it makes sense. Oh, okay, well, I'm standing on this ball. And, and when you look at the whole plate of everything that they do, it's all meant for deception. And what I was getting at about before is that we, we all pay our taxes to NASA. And to pay somebody money in order for them to lie to you is, is a problem. We, I've already stated that. But on top of that, these guys are out there developing technology. They are developing new systems, new computer software. And one of the biggest eye openers to me is when I found out that when they're done with these patents, when they're done with this technology, they sell the patents to the highest bidder. And if you know anything about economies or economics, when you do something like that, that drives prices up because what happens is a company buys that patent and they're able to charge more for their product because they're the only one that can use the patent. What should be happening, which is obvious, is that when we paid for the research, it's our money, NASA doesn't have any money, they get their money from us. When they develop a new technology, that technology should be released to the world for free. Yes. And that drives prices down. Because then you've got all these organizations and businesses that all get to use this new fancy software that our money paid for. And to have that sold to the highest bidder so that that company can then use that technology to charge us again, I mean, that's like a slap in the face and a kick in the balls. I mean, it's, it really is a disgrace. And so I just ask that people really take the time to, I guess, bring in your family, bring in your friends. It's hard, I know, and I've, I've slowly started to do it myself because at first you, you want to get a good grasp yourself. And now that I do, I'm, I'm venturing out and speaking out more and getting people to, to look into the things that they believe. And I think that if you do that, you're going to start to realize that it gets easier um, I know a lot of people do a lot of different kinds of videos and I am all for anything that people do. Be yourself, be unique, make a video. But something I've enjoyed doing is, uh, you know, talking with the opposition, talking with people that maybe people say, Jeremy, why do you do videos with that person? Why do you, why do you let them talk to you that way? Why do you, well, it's because I don't want to get stuck in an echo chamber. I don't want to be what I think science is, which is, um, you know, basically a, a circle jerk it's really that's what peer review is that's what science has become is you know great job you did great there you did great that's a great test and and they all just follow after each other right and i don't want that to happen to me i don't want to be part of any kind of group like that i want it to be more um about growing in my knowledge and that's not growing in knowledge when you um have a group that's doing peer review and they all look at a paper and if it doesn't match exactly what they already believe they dismiss it and if it maybe increases something, well, maybe we'll accept this, but 
to me, that is the, the antithesis of science. It's not science. And I think that everybody here is, I think what Robbie said at the beginning couldn't have been said better, that we love science. I mean, that's the sad thing about this whole thing is that it's just the word science has been stolen by people who care more about their own prosperity than everyone else's. And I, I don't feel that way. I feel that we can move together as a people towards the truth. And I'm going to keep making videos. And I know a lot of people are going to keep making videos and pointing this stuff out. And again, the reason I didn't put things up on the board today and point out different things is because I challenge people to do it themselves. I want you to pull up the ISS footage, pull up the Apollo footage, pull up the Mercury footage, pull up anything. And that's another thing I point out. I don't care what videos you watch. If I was trying to lie to you, I would stop you from watching videos. I would say, well, don't look at NASA stuff. That's fake. Why would you look at that? And I don't say that. I want you to look at everything. Look into everything. And if you find something that you think is interesting and looks real, then send it to me because I want to know too. But I'll tell you that the more you look into things will be the more clear this fraud has become. And so I challenge you to tell your friends and family the same thing is if you have somebody that thinks you're a flat earther and they think you're crazy, tell them, watch NASA footage, go watch space footage, watch the next launch, w tell them about the screen change, right? Tell them that that's what's going to happen. Say, oh, I know exactly what's going to happen. That rocket's going to launch. It's going to create a lot of smoke and fire and it's going to get up in the sky and then the screen will change. Ask them why we have no astronauts. Think of GoPro lenses, the GoPro cameras. They're everywhere. I have one. They're cheap. Why have we never just had a GoPro lens stuck to the side of a rocket as it takes off? You won't find it. And so when you really look into it, there's no pictures of the earth. There's no evidence of these things that should be everywhere. It's 2017. Everybody's got an HD camera in their freaking pocket. And yet we don't have HD pictures of the earth. And I've made videos about videos from the moon. We don't have videos from the moon of the earth. Uh, everybody questioned what's going on with the eclipse this year. What's, why don't we have, if these people cared about teaching and, and really giving us the truth, then that's what we would see. We would see cameras set up on the moon since it's always facing the earth, it would be done. We'd be able to see it any day, any time. And the excuse can't be money because again, you could easily have an advertisement on there. People wouldn't mind if it said Pizza Hut on the side of the thing, but we got to watch from... <laughs> I just think that um, in closing, I see my time's up. I went too long. Um, in closing, I just want to thank you guys again for, for being here. I think it's a testament to um, Robbie. Robbie, thank you so much for, for setting this up. It's like a dream come true. It's something I didn't ever expect, but it's it's a maturity of a thought process that I, I don't see ending now. And that's because of all of you, that the more we demand proof and evidence of everything that we're told is true, then the more true that stuff will get. We just really need to make sure that we aren't buying into falsities. So if I say something that you don't agree with, if I say something that you don't believe, challenge me, challenge me, because if it's true, then I should be able to provide evidence that it is true. And I say the same thing about everything that we're told. And that's the only way that we're going to call these guys out. And, um, you know, to NASA, if they're watching, um, get your act together because we're tearing you down. It's good. It's, it's over. It is over. Close up shop. Um, and I can't say it any other way without being rude or <laughs> um, I'll save that for my videos. Not so much here. But I think that uh, if, if we all put our, our efforts together in getting people to believe only what we can prove, then NASA will be gone, in my hopes, by the end of the year. So that's my goal. I'm going to stick to it. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Jaron. When uh, Jaron was speaking, Robbie and I stepped outside for a minute and we were talking about Jaron and just where he's come in the last year. It's been fun to watch and um, watch 
everyone grow. And he just said it. And I, I can tell you this. I don't know too many people that I can say are more passionate about finding answers than that guy right there. So, so thank you, Jaron. Now, 1145 is when we're going to come back. Uh, what we need to do, though, is I'll, I'll make an announcement about five minutes before so everybody can kind of come back in. And once again, we thank you. When you do come back in, I know that you've gotten the, your seats warm. But if you could close in on that just so that we can actually get everybody together so that the people that are coming, some people are just showing up. So we want to say thanks. But take another break and uh, enjoy. Stretch your legs a little bit. Shake some hands. Greet each other. Say so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.